What's going on? Raven Ritual 666 back from the dead with another Diablo 4 build guide. Today I am super excited to bring to you my Blizzard Arclash hybrid build. This build is so good for leveling from level 50 into world tier 4 uh, all the way through to Nightmare Dungeon tier 100 and through to level 50 in the pit plus. Stay tuned for some of the reasons why this build is so good since the changes of Season 4, and how we can scale both damages at the same time with ease. No uniques required, no master working. Let's get into the build. Dying is very nice because it gives you a little bit of health regen, which is very nice to have when you're going into those higher nightmare dungeons and into the pit. Looking at the chest piece, we're just running juggernauts, we're just slapping that straight on there. That way, uh, we can actually reach the armor cap, now, this season you only need to reach 9,230 armor, and then you are at the physical resistance armor cap. So keep that in mind. Uh, for the gauntlets, uh, we are running accelerated. Accelerating is helping to increase our attack speed. That is very nice with Blizzard and with Arclash. For the pants, there are a few options depending what you get, especially while you are leveling. Now, I run Mage Lord's Adventurous Pants, which is giving me uh, damage reduction thanks to the Veer's Mastery Key passive. So when I've got three close enemies nearby, up to 27%. Now, if you don't have a good role on Mage Lords, some of the other aspects you should be running would be um, Aspect of Might is very nice, 20% DR after using a basic skill. Uh, Ever-Living Aspect is very, very good. 25% less damage from Vulnerable and Crowd Control, and we are applying a lot of Vulnerable and Crowd Control, so you can very much run that. Snow Guards is amazing as well. You get like 30% less damage for 3 seconds uh, after entering a Blizzard and leaving a Blizzard, which is very good. However, I often cast Blizzards from afar, and then I go in close with Arclash. So that DR isn't always there to begin the fight, so keep that in mind. Now, for the boots, there are a couple uniques that you would want to run if you get them early, and with the season, you currently can. You would run Tau Rashes or Isus. Now, if you don't have Isus Heirloom, what you want to run on your boots would be a uh, Hectic Aspect. So, Hectic Aspect, after casting 5 basic skills, um, reduces one of your cooldowns by 2 seconds. Um, so that is still very nice to have, particularly while you're uh, leveling from 50+. plus. Now, you can run a Wand or a Dagger, it doesn't really matter. Um, I run a Wand because of the Lucky Hit Chance. Now, the reason we are using Lucky Hit Chance is, when we are tempering... Uh, we are tempering onto each piece of gear. Uh, lucky hit to apply immobilize, as well as lucky hit to heal another bit of passive health regen. Uh, lucky hit to apply freeze. Lucky hit to apply stun. Lucky hit to apply slow. So between all four of those, we are getting so much crowd control, which is working very well with Devouring Blaze as uh, a skill. Um, so on the wand, you just want flat damage. Flat damage is important. If you get damage to close, it's also good. But damage is really nice because damage is going to scale Arclash and it's going to scale our Ice Spikes damage. Uh, you want crit damage for the Ice Spikes, intelligence as, a, as your main stat. And for the tempering on your wand, Ice Spike damage is very, very important to have. And lucky hit to apply a poison or shadow damage for if you get a Tower Rash's ring. For that fourth extra aspect. Now, if you don't have a Tower Rashes, it doesn't really matter what that last temper that you put onto your one single hand weapon. Now, as soon as you get a glacial aspect, that's when you swap to this build. So I got mine at about level 47 and popped it on and, and pretty much just destroyed through the rest of the game up to level 100. Um, so for the amulet, we do want to reduce unstable currents just because we get a lot of extra damage. Uh, with the Conjuration Mastery. And we want to, again, just scale flat damage. Not extra Ice Spikes, just damage. So we're getting value out of Arclash, and we're getting value out of Blizzard's Ice Spikes. Uh, for uh, your rings, the first ring, you want to be running a some form of resource. Now, it doesn't really matter. depends on what you get. If you get a very good Umbral with at least four uh, primary resource, run Umbral. It's going to be amazing for your mobbing potential. Put on damage, put on resource generation... This is why we run the Arclash Hybrid. 
The problem with Blizzard is it is very mana intensive. And while you're leveling, you are not going to be able to masterwork and temper your gear to have enough mana per second. Which means you're going to cast Blizzard a few times. You're going to be standing there with nothing else to do. In this case, we cast Blizzard a few times. We pop our ultimate and we go in there with Arclash and Flame Shield and we just destroy it. And it's very good on bosses. It applies more lucky hit, more crowd control, stunning more bosses even more often. Now, for your second ring, uh, same kind of stats, just damage, resource, gen. Now, if you don't have a Tower Rashes, it is perfectly okay. Um, I, I think the, the main thing that I would run on your ring is just another damage aspect. Like, Moonrise was very good while leveling. Um, basic skills stack up and grants Vampiric Rage. So you get a bonus to 20% attack speed, which is great for Arclash and for Blizzards. 15% uh, movement speed and a flat 80% basic skill damage. That's very good. If not, just run Storm Swirl. Nearly 30% damage to vulnerable enemies. A very, very good alternative. Uh, again, if you're struggling for resource, put on Prodigies. Uh, Prodigies aspect using a cooldown restores up to 25% mana. If you don't have Umbral, you can run uh, Prodigies there. Or even aspect of adaptability. Very, very nice option. Uh, that means when cast below 50% mana, basic skills generate 3 mana per cast. When cast at above 50, uh, your basic skills will do up to 80% damage. So those are your kind of options, uh, depending on what you want to run. Uh, for your offhand, uh, you kind of want to just get like intelligence, damage, crit chance is very nice. We want to get a little bit of crit chance because the more crit chance we have, the more damage we're going to get from our ice bikes. Again, for tempering, just flat damage and lucky hit whatever you want lucky hit a uh, chance to deal cold damage or whatever it might be it doesn't really matter so taking a look at the skill tree we're going to start with arclash because it's a blizzard arclash build so you want to go five points into arclash i forgot to mention before that you do want to get plus ranks into arclash off your pantaloons now that is very good to have mine is actually a greater affix so i've got the plus four points end game shaco will be amazing for this build, but this is a leveling guide. So we're going to go across to Enhanced Arclash and all the way through to Glinting Arclash to reduce your cooldowns. That's pretty good early. Five points in a Fireball. Fireball is the first enchantment we are going to pick up. That is very good for AoE clears, whether you're doing Hell Tides for leveling, whether you're doing Nightmare Dungeons, or even in the pit. Frozen Orb, one, two... Three, all the way through to Greater Frozen Orb, just because this is our second enchantment, and this is a way we are applying Vulnerable. Very good source of Vulnerable. Next, one, two Flame Shield. You can go all the way through to Shimmering Flame Shield. If not, you can hold those points and put them wherever you like, whether it's more Barrier, whether it's into Lucky Hit Chance, it's up to you. If you're running a Dagger, you can potentially take those two points out, and put them into lucky hit chance here. However, it's only additive, so I don't really run it. But I like having some passive health regen. It's just, it suits my playstyle. We use Undying and Flame Shield. It just helps with survivability. Now, teleport, we have to run it all the way. Movement speed after teleporting is fantastic. And the damage reduction is very good to have. Especially once you're getting into the pit around level 50. Or into those Nightmare Dungeons 90 plus. Very important to have that. One point into Elemental Attunement is nice since Blizzard doesn't really, and the Ice Spikes give you a big lucky hit chance. Arclash is much better for them than that. So, when it has a chance to swipe twice, lucky hit chance is decent. You have a chance of applying all those crowd controls from our tempering affixes, which means we're going to get value from Devouring Blaze. Uh, which means we've got a chance of resetting one of our cooldowns. Uh, it just all syncs very well together. Three points to Glass Cannon for the damage. Uh, ice Armor all the way through to Shimmering Ice Armor. It, it's kind of good for the mana regen. Um, so on boss fights, I kind of start with that uh, when I cast Blizzard. And then Shimmering Ice Armor, you can almost get it back every time after the amount of times you cast Blizzard. So uh, just the usual DR stuff. Three points into Mana Shield, we need that DR. Three points into protection. We need that barrier, especially, especially for the pit. Like, we are super tangy all the way to T100. But once you get to, like, pit 50 plus, like, things start to hurt. So you need DR. Uh, we go three points Conjuration Mastery. And I forgot to mention this before. So on your amulet, you can use Conjuration Mastery ranks or 
you can use Devouring Blaze ranks. Devouring Blaze is probably more consistent for damage along the way with the amount of crowd control we apply, but when we pop our ultimate Unstable Currents, Conjuration Mastery is just absolutely insane, the damage. So, I believe you can actually get ranks to both. So, in the perfect world, if you can get plus three on Conjuration and plus three on Devouring Blaze, that is phenomenal. Uh, run that because the amount of damage you'll get is huge. Uh, we'll come back to Icy Vale. You can chuck a point in there, but that's a throwaway point. You can put it anywhere you want to. But obviously, Blizzard all the way through to extending the duration of Blizzard. Uh, Devouring Blaze, just one point into Inner Flames, three into Devouring Blaze. I love the change this season. If they are crowd-controlled, the bonus is increased to 30%. We talked about tempering. We're getting lucky hit chance to apply immobilize lucky hit chance to apply slow lucky hit chance to apply stun all those are crowd controls which means this is up a lot more of the time there is actually something i forgot to mention that i missed before uh when we looked at my gear uh just to give you an example i had forgot to temper my helmet after my last pit clear and I didn't actually temper my amulet until I was like level 90 because I didn't know what I wanted it to temper until I got to one game. So this build will be fine even if you are tempering all your gear. Now, all the frosty skill damages that we all know, love, and need. Yes, they all scale off of Ice Spikes permafrost. Three points in the whole frost. Three points in the icy touch. Then for the Mitre's touch, one point into unstable currents. And finally, the attack speed. We want the attack speed. It is nice to have. It is useful. It's great for Arc Clash. It's great for Blizzard. We want attack speed. And finally, for the Piso Resistance, the finale, the great Veer's Mastery. Yes, this is a Veer's Mastery build. The reason being, the pit gets spicy. Enemies have a lot of health. They hurt. We need the extra little bit of damage from Arc Clash, but more importantly, we get 20% we get less damage, and so much out of Veer's Mastery. Avalanche is nice if you want to cast a couple more Blizzards, like here and there, but the lucky hit chance is pretty slim off Blizzard. So, Veer's Mastery, that's why we're running the Arc Clash, we're running the Unstable Currents, it just synergizes beautifully. Finally, for the Paragon board, I'm not going to go through it all in detail, the link to this build guide will be down there in the description. But let's have a quick look. There are a couple of things you want to change while you are leveling. So firstly, we go Tactician. You can actually replace that with Winter if you don't get Tactician early. So keep that in mind. Winter is very, very good. Now, you're going to go through and follow most of the rest of the build that we've got here. However, there is one thing I want to talk to you about. So early on, and once you push into World Tier 4, you are going to find your resistance is, are very, very bad. So, what you can do is, rather than go into Icefall, you can take those points initially and come down here and spec into the Resist All Elements. Grab the extra Life Nodes here. Uh, that is just going to help with a bit of survivability early. And then, once you're... Feeling good, you can go back in Icefall or anywhere you want. You know, I, I kind of find I, I kept those points in there and I followed this entire build guide. And then once I picked up Stalagmite and I went into here, that's when I took out those points to help me get to my exploit glyph, which we've got in there last. So, um, thank you so much. If you've made it this far in the video, you're a legend. But, um, you'll find me live on Twitch, you know, a couple times a week. So please click on my Twitch. Come join me in the Discord if you've got any questions. I am a source to remain. Uh, you will see me pushing leaderboards for the next month or two. You will see me pushing Pit, taking this build to the next level, the next stage that it can go. Um, but also, please hit that subscribe button on YouTube. It is free. It's got a money-back guarantee. If you don't want to see my videos in the future, that's fine. Hit that subscribe button, please, and thank you. Uh, in interest of keeping this video short, I'm just going to do a tiny bit of gameplay of just how to play this build. But otherwise, see you all in the next one. So, looking at gameplay, one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to pop your Ice Armor, you're just going to cast a ton of Blizzards, and then you can just hold down Arc Lash, especially once they are frozen, and you're just going to get so much value out of it. And then, when you're going to leap, 
Just ultimate. Hit your flame shield. And look, look at all those extra conjurations. You're getting so much damage and value out of it. And then ready. Flame shield's back. We're just going to arc lash and just instant dead. So you want to stick back a little bit. Get your blizzards going. I mean, teleport is pretty much just a movement skill. Or to get you out of trouble when you need to. But you can just sit back, cast blizzards as much as you want. Wait till that ultimate's up, and then once your ultimate's up, you're just going to go straight in there and just absolutely obliterate enemies. So you're ready? I'm just going to R-Clash right now. Feels pretty really good. It's just extra damage. Very, very good. Heaps of survivability. No problems at all. Like uh, The extra little passive health regen there is super nice to have. And that is all. Guys, thank you so much for your time today. Have a great one. See you on the next.